do 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 Star Citizen Live, all about Alpha 315. Hey everybody, welcome to Star Citizen Live, all about Alpha 315. I'm your host, without the toast. No, I didn't feel good the second I did it. Uh, Jared Huckabee, uh, joining us on the show this week is uh, Squadron 42 uh, person, uh, Rich Tyrer. Uh <laughs> Like, didn't we do a whole show where we were like, yeah, I'm leaving and I'm not coming back. And then we're like, no, but you still have Alpha 315 with your features. So we're getting you one last time. How you doing, yep. Rich? I'm doing very well. well. I think that's the first time I've been introduced as S42 person. I like it. Well, I couldn't remember what came after the S42. <laughs> FPS director? Squadron 42? FPS, FPS. Squadron 42 FPS game director. You see, I'm not used to that. But I, but I still do the core gameplay pillar for the PU, which yes. the features are becoming lighter. As we, as, as anybody who's been following uh, the show for at least the seven years I've been here, a, a title is, the title here is a, a very Serial. small part of what you actually do uh, here. I myself have had five titles in seven years and my job hasn't really changed. So, All right, so Alpha 315 is currently on the PTU. Uh, it's available for Wave 1 testers, uh, concierge, and subscribers. Uh, so we're here to talk about that today. Um, I, uh, if you folks might be wondering, uh, Todd Pappy was originally scheduled to be here, but Todd's been flying around. He just had a big uh, summit in Montreal, uh, so we decided we could, we could we could give him a little a little break. Plus, it's Rich's last time, so we're just going to throw Rich to the to the fire for for one last hour. Um, as usual. Uh, you can submit your questions live in the chat. You can do so by prefacing your question with the word question in capital letters surrounded by brackets. And, of course, we uh, put up a thread earlier in the week and started collecting questions on Spectrum and let people vote up which ones they wanted to see uh, added most. Um, I'm going <laughs> to th this happens every single this happens every single uh, uh, all about. Uh, so I'm going to point it out uh, when, you, when you say, hey, now that this is in Alpha 315, How's this going to be in Alpha 316 and 317 and 318? Like, that's not a question about 315. That's a question about the future and stuff like that. So we are going to try to keep the questions to Alpha 315. There will be a couple future questions in there, though. Yeah, we, can't, we can't help it. We can't help it. But right off the bat, Rich, let's start with the big elephant in the room. This was the most voted up question on the entire thread. Uh, I can already look in the chat, and I can already see this question uh, coming in here. Uh, what solutions have you come up with uh, to mitigate the roving uh, um, overdose uh, uh, death squads. Why are you muted? You're not muted on my end. Did you forget to charge your thing? Am I back now? You're back now. So, now I've got a cool <laughs> wire there. It wasn't me. Cool it was him. Yeah. Um, so... If you've played the latest PTU patch, you will notice that we have disabled the use of the multi-tool um, tractor beam and the medical gun and the dedicated medical gun and the uh, other med pens to be able to target other players. So that will mitigate or will remove the uh, you know the the scenario that has been described with the roving overdose squads. Uh, we sat down and discussed this, um, myself, uh, Todd, Tony, Chris, about how we wanted to handle it for 3.15 and going forward. Obviously, the ultimate goal is to have green zones be, um, you know, that you can get anything out. We're not arbitrarily stopping you from doing those things. And then there are mechanisms in place, whether that is AI guard security to be able to resolve that. Um, because of where we were at with 3.15 and the cycle, we felt that the most prudent uh, solution right now was to kind of keep the status quo, which was as it is in 3.14, as it has been for a long time, which is to prevent essentially interaction in the green zones. Um, uh, the main reason behind this, because of the most prudent, is that if you do suffer an injury in a green zone uh, and you do uh, regenerate at a hospital, you don't lose your gear, you don't lose your equipment, um, you know, because essentially we simulate that it, the AI security saw you or 
software and then came out and rescued you and then took you back to hospital. So even though you regenerate in your in a medical gown, when you go to your location inventory, all of your equipment that you were wearing is still there. So we felt that for 315, the safest option was to do that. We did discuss for 315 the potential ability to just go, hey, well, maybe you can get your weapons out and you can only fire them at criminals. But we thought that might be just throwing more more <laughs> petrol onto the bonfire. And we thought, uh, it, I think if we were earlier in the cycle and we'd done some of these changes because we had to focus on quite a lot with inventory and healing, you know, they're very, they're two huge intrusive features. Mm. Um, potentially we could have gone down that road. Um, but for now, for 3.15 and the latest PTU patch, it has been disabled. But we will be looking into the future about how to more elegantly solve it and allowing interaction because that's what we want you know the tractor beam is supposed to be loading up cargo boxes although i did read one guy was like oh i can't um, send hot dogs and ice creams to people in the landing zone with my tractor beam anymore but so i'm sorry for that person but yeah we we do we do want to have it in the end okay so if, if, if to make sure that i understand uh so the the intention for right now for 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 three fifteen for the immediate future and what is is the to, same as three fourteen. It, it's to disable the the, the dis, disable the the the, the, the medi guns and all the medi pens and the inside green zones, but also to make it so that oh, if no, you just die, just to be clear, that's to disable it on other people. On other you people. can still use it, yeah. So you can still get the gun out, you can still get the med pens out, and use them on yourself. We're just disabling it, being able to use it on other people. Gotcha. And and then if you die inside a green zone, you don't lose your material just in case you uh, we got a right. question, a question coming up later about the various falls and stuff like that that can that can occur. Uh, so so if you do die inside a green zone, you're not going to lose your stuff. I mean, uh, technical. My microphone is being stuck about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to hold my mic. <clears throat> hold it like this, like a uh, hello. Now you look like Bob Barker on The Price is Right. Yeah, this is actually better, right? Yeah, tell everybody to spay new to their pets. Yeah. Uh, okay. Go ahead. All right. Know, next one. I took a week off and we're doing great. Uh, so so the next question was actually, was were we supposed to be preemptively administrating uh, any overdose drugs to ourselves in green zones to combat the current assault we're experiencing? I'm mean, going to guess the answer to that was no. No, although I did like that that became the meta to kind of stave off. But no, that's not the intention. Okay. Uh, hey, there's some Price of Right Prices Right fans in the chat. See, some people know what I'm doing. Um, let's let's uh, let's switch over to inventory for a little bit. Uh, is the inventory system going to allow members in the same party to share items that are stored within a ship, or will that come with a later? Uh, updated party org system, stuff like that? Well, essentially, going forward, we still have the placeholder solution of local inventory. So we didn't want to put loads of engineering time into a placeholder solution, which is the local inventory, which is this the temporary bag of holding. So the answer is, going forward, absolutely yes. We want org members and other players to be able to access inventories and share things. Um, with the current implementation of local inventory, the answer is no. Uh, so that is on a per, you know, per person play, uh, inventory. So if I go onto a ship and you're on, and it's your ship, Jared, I can open up the ship inventory, and it will only be my ship inventory. And if you open up the ship inventory, it will only be your ship inventory. But local inventory, as I've said, I think on multiple ISCs and SCL Live before, local inventory is a placeholder solution until we have true physical inventory, which will be lockers, compartments, weapon racks, cargo hold, so on and so forth. And that will, will be accessible by any player. It cannot be stated enough that when you're running a live game in the middle of development, uh, you know, sometimes these are the challenges that you... Uh, well, you always have new players, right? Yeah. yeah. So who has uh, no previous information? Uh, luckily, we have a very helpful community and stuff, especially with the uh, uh, guide pro uh, guide pro uh, program that's out there now. Uh, currently, we can't transport ship components via the new physical inventory system. So outfitting each ship with higher grade shields and quantum drives uh, tends to be a very painful process. Uh, why is this? The short answer 
and I'll give a long answer to give at least um, you know some expositions. The short answer is because um, inventory is larger than just one pillar or one team, uh, and you know to have all of that aspect to the ship side, which is kind of all like physicalized cargo and things like that, um, we weren't able to deliver it all at once. Um, so that's the short answer. The long answer is that um, there is going to be an intention that we move away like we did with the PMA to the inner thought um, inventory system, uh, that we'll be moving away from the VMA towards more like a, a hangar management app and that hangar management app then allows you to manage um, all of your items and gear within um, at the hangar and including mm -hmm. that that's where you then go and go, I want to take my, uh, you know, repeater or laser cannon or whatever out of storage and put it onto a ship. And then, you know, NPCs would come out essentially and do that. So essentially there are two kind of separate systems in terms of the vehicle um, management and the player management, the personal management. Uh, and essentially, there is a gray area in between where it's this is the, you know, the pitfalls of working on a live game that not everything always aligns up due to just amount of work. Mm. And this is one of those cases where, OK, in the short term, it might be a more painful process, but it's it's moving us closer to the to the final goal of where we want to be. And that's the case with a lot of the systems that we add live. You know, sometimes people go, well, why have they done X, Y, Z? That's worse than what we had. And then they realize, oh, that's because that's the groundwork for this next piece of functionality that allows us to move forward. So in the case of ships and personal inventory, we had to remove global inventory, which is where everything was stored. So in global inventory, all of your items were stored, all of your weapons, all of your ships, your ship weapons, and we had to move everything into local inventory. And because we had to do that step, that has created that friction. But the intention is, you know, it, you will be able to do that in the future, or eventually, or in the future. But for now, yeah. yes, uh, you know, that's something we do, unfortunately we have to accept. Uh, we got some questions in the chat about the hangar app like whether it will let us uh, stock ships before spawning it and stuff. Uh, we'll be covering the Hangar app as we get closer to its release. Um, as with all things, there will be a list of things that we want it to do, and then there will be what it can actually do in the T0. Uh, so like that, so I don't want to put too many ideas in folks' heads. But, uh, and that will also be not on my pillar, so I will not. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it's, a USP, that, so. it's USP, so we're going to let them cover it when it comes time. So uh, uh, also... <laughs> uh, questions about like polaris and stuff or, or, or ships and stuff like that want to direct people again to the public roadmap the public roadmap is your best uh, source of information for when a ship is going uh to arrive if you don't it, it, look at the release view and if you don't the release view is usually about half a year to a year out if you don't see the ship on the release view there's not going to be much information to uh, uh to share about that just yet uh that's ready to share just yet anyway uh Switching from uh, that, so the Hangar uh, app is one of those new apps that we're going to get in three fifteen. We just got knickknacks. Uh, in regards to knickknacks, uh, what happens to items that get stolen by another player? Does it still show up on the original player's app, or does it get moved to the new player's list? So it gets moved to the new player's list. So there will be obviously probably edge cases, and there's a difference between in terms of ownership. Um, but the premise is that, you know, if I drop a gun and you pick up that gun, uh, you know, that gun is then moved to your knickknacks app and then you can then track it. But there will be further rules around that probably in the future around the legality of whether you have stolen that or whether I could mark it as stolen and so on and so on. We've talked a lot about that in terms of uh, moving that forward. But for now, it is the simple matter of you pick that gun up, that gun's yours. Um, that's a good uh, uh, good time to transition over to a question that uh, almost every subscriber has. Uh, in, in as far as death and looting goes, we can now you know loot players. Uh, what uh, what happens with looting subscriber items or even just pledged gear? You know, people have pledged for you know this trophy or or or, or the or the the old citizen con duster or whatnot. Uh, what uh, what happens when those subscriber items are looted off you? Do the players lose those forever, and do the new players have them forever? So specifically for three fifteen, 
uh, if you die or if you go into a down state and somebody loots those items or your ship blows up and you can't get back to those items, um, you will not have access to those items anymore, whether the new player has stolen them or whether they've been vaporized. Uh, so you will lose them in 3.15. Uh, they are not removed from your account. So when 3.16 comes around and we re-entitle all the items, you will be re-entitled all those items. So that's the short term, what will happen in 3.15. Uh, the intention long term is that we have a mechanism in the game that allows you to kind of um, associate yourself as a player inside the game with those items. And if those items are then stolen or taken or, or whatever, you can then, we will have a mechanism for you to be able to get those back. Now, I don't think it will be... Um, a simple matter of just an insurance claim where you just put the insurance claim and then you get it back because there's lots of first off real life insurance is incredibly complex so to mirror something like that and lots of people do insurance fraud so it's like i yeah. die and then i claim my insurance back and then i just go and loot my body and i'm duplicating items so we might have a system where it's like that item is associated by me i've registered the item if i've got a special weapon or whatever and then if that person gets picked up by UE security or it comes into the hands of the law, then it's given back to you, similar to if my car got stolen and you know the police found my car and it was still drivable and usable, then it would be returned to me. So there will be mechanisms in the future inside the game that will allow you to potentially get these items back. Um, there's still lots of questions that we need to resolve on our end, right. but just to be clear for 315, somebody loots your subscriber items, that player will take them but they were not removed from your account so it come 316 they will be re-entitled to you yeah I, I think it's important i know you just reiterated but i'm going to reiterate it again because it's that important here uh while we're in alpha when you, you know while we're in alpha there's, there's you're not at risk of losing your items at alpha those things are still on your account they're still they're still on your pledge you go to you go you log into the website and you see the items you know attributed to your account they're still yours you still have them it's a question of access to them it currently in the 315 branch if you, they're taken off you will lose access to them for the 315 uh, branch until we have this other system in place or until we hit 316 and all of them are reattributed to the account so the loss is temporary at the moment, but long term, you know, vision out for Star Citizen and whatnot, those things that you've pledged for are are safe at the moment. It's yep. So uh let's see. Uh another death and looting question while we're on the topic here. Uh currently in 315 PTU, finding your body after dying is nearly impossible. Uh will there be a marker to find your body or the cargo of your ship if you explode it? we are trying to add it so it's something that it's been on the list for us to add um, obviously these systems are, are quite um, complex so there's been lots of bugs that we've been going through and the engineering teams have been you know trying to get as many bugs as they can fixed um, it is still on I actually got an update today from one of the engineers and um, it, it's it is something that we want to do to try and help it's basically the gravestone in, in other games right that you can right. go back and find it um, obviously your body is still there so if you do remember where you did die then you should be able to go back and retrieve it but we will we're trying to add a marker whether it makes it to 315 or not will be dependent on how many bugs we get i imagine we also because everything is supposed to be diegetic in the verse or something it's like some kind of black box or something to, 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 to track as well, far as the more lore, than, as far as the... it'll more than likely be some kind of um in terms of the law like some kind of mission marker that is associated with with you and then it's, it's you know it's your scanner kind of thing that they're able to pick it up um but yes it's something that we do want to we do want to add to the game cool uh, uh, uh why does uh falling downstairs or getting knocked over by the wind kill us so often instead of leading to a down state it's the same with trolleys so interestingly the reason why you die is because you take massive amounts of physics damage. It's the same with ramps. It's the same with trolleys. And the way that the down state works, and I think I described this in one of the ICs, is that if you take more damage than your entire health bar, essentially times two, um, you go past downed and straight to dead. 
So essentially, if you get shot with an Idris railgun, you're you're dead. There's no like, oh, I, I I managed to survive for a little bit, and somebody can rescue me. It's like, no, 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 you go straight to jail. You know, you 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 die straight away. Um, whereas if you only take a certain amount of damage, you go to downed. So in the cases here where you're taking, you're dying because you're falling down the stairs or a trolley's hit you or something to do with a tractor beam. It's generally because something's gone wrong and you've taken a significant amount of physics damage because you've intersected something. Do you remember you you, you see games, old games like Hitman or whatever, where the drag doll would get like stuck and then just explode into the right. into the air? It's because there's been, you know, a physics <laughs> collision. T- t- taking yeah. one point of damage a thousand times in a second. Exactly. And that's basically what's happened. So you, there's these collisions that happen. And that basically does, I think I saw one where it's like, it's like 80,000 damage or something. <laughs> you know, you basically just get insta gibbed. So that, that's why. So it, it's, uh, to, ex- to the external viewer, it looks like the wind just knocked you over and you suddenly died. And it's like, thanks, wind. Uh, but what's actually happening is, is, is your, the physics is causing you to impact the ground so many times yes. or, or whatever surface you've hit. Into the the, I mean, well, it's just. It's, it's whether the player gets desynchronized or something or, you know, there's, it, there's, these are complex problems to solve. You know, generally it's lots of different ones, but, um, yeah. you know, we'll eventually get them all. Yeah. Like and it, it, as far as solutions to that, like I said, that, that's, that's just the, the generic work that's ongoing with the physics system. Absolutely. And, yes. and making sure it's, a, it, it's not one specific fix. It's just as the physics system continues to evolve and continues to develop, those, those outliers will be, well, hopefully be addressed along the way. I remember, I remember a story right around, right around the time where I started, when I started here, um, people were flying a Hornet around in, in like, in like free, in like free fly in arena commander. No other, nobody else there, nothing to collide. Like. And after some amount of time, the, the Hornet would explode. And they're like, why did I just explode? I mean, it was never consistent. Sometimes you'd, you'd survive nine minutes. Sometimes it'd only be four minutes. And it's like, well, why are people exploding? And they found out that it was because there was uh, the flashlight that was equipped to the player character at that time was 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 colliding with the, with, with the Hornet. And depending on your maneuvers, and like, it would keep hitting the Hornet and going one damage, one damage, one damage, one damage, one damage, one damage. So the flashlight that was attached to the player character was slowly destroying the Hornet from within. Well, it's the same when people were walking into, like, you'd lower the ramp down, and then you get into the ship, and it blow up. It was the ramp colliding with the floor, right? That was <laughs> causing <laughs> loads of damage. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, we're still on death and looting. Let's stay there. Um, how are CIG planning on managing random deaths now that there are consequences, so this is right now, such as falling through the map randomly, getting stuck inside a chair, lift, etc. Uh, all the times we have no choice but to reset or backspace out uh, loss of items due to just randomly exploding mid quantum stuff like that. Like the list of random deaths was very, I long suppose. Here. Yes. I mean, I suppose this comes back to, you know, a live game in development. We we've obviously, I'll touch on this later, but we've obviously put in the server reset crash recovery yep. um, or the server crash recovery to allow us to reset. Obviously client crashes are more varied in their manner because lots of different things can happen or for example just the random deaths where you just walk up the stairs and you get pulled fall through the floor or whatever um fundamentally we need to track them down and we need to um you know we need to fix them but if we prevented releasing features to the live game because of existing bugs we'd never be able to release anything no exactly so we, we need to kind of push them live to see how they all interact with each other trolleys is a good one for example you know we uncovered quite a few issues with trolleys. we ended up fixing a lot of the times where the ramp would co- destroy the ship around because of trolleys because people were like squashing trolleys and opening ramps onto trolleys so uh, it's just one of those cases where you know we need to get feedback on them we need to highlight them and then we need to make time to fix them and go through but there's just so many of them so mm. but you know we can't slow down the development and trying to get these integrated systems in there because we need to get feedback on those systems as well. So yeah. it's, it's, you, you know, if we don't release the features, we wouldn't be able to test them, but it is what it is. Uh, heavy Bob in the chat says, maybe not release it till you fix the bugs. This is a good chance to uh, remind folks that every tier of star citizen alpha is a testing environment. It, it, it's, it's, you know, that you've got the evil Cotty, 
at the base, the testing environment. Then you've got the PTU, testing environment. But even when we release it, it still starts it as an alpha, which is still a testing environment. So it is all for testing. The whole pyramid there, or the whole ladder, well, as it were. The, the other thing to understand, I think, is that Imagine I could click my fingers and we went to zero bugs, right? So I, could, uh, we, we, I just that. did that, right? I'm not gonna zero bugs, that's it. With three months development of 500 man dev team adding new stuff, we would generate loads more bugs because that's, you know, generally, I, I remember hearing somebody, t game development is you're basically working on a broken game 95% of the development until the end where you fix everything and then that's it. But then the game comes out, they stop adding more stuff, right? So for us, we've still got fundamental systems going in like inventory and healing and they touch a lot of systems. So even if we fixed all the current bugs, we'd still generate new bugs. More bugs every single and that's, and that's why we're trying to get all the features in there until we can get to be like where we go, okay, we're content complete from a feature perspective. Now let's close that out polish it 1.0 and then go from there you know the full release but until that is it's that's the nature of life live releases and there are things you can discuss with this many testers and there are things that you can discuss with this many testers and there's things that you can only diagnose with all of the available testers that we have in the stars of the community Absolutely. again that's why the live environment it's, it's very important never forget it the live environment is still stars as an alpha it's still a test environment. It's it's why we have the uh, the wonderful um, issue council. It's like that, so fo so folks can still help us identify these things and repro these things and help us to determine the actual cause of these things. Because just like the wind knocking you over and you dying, it, you go, oh, the wind just killed me. But it's actually not the wind. It's the thing that you that it knocked you into. And we get you a lot of good feedback on the features that we mm -hmm. can react to and you know make make help the game better so it's win-win you mentioned server crash recovery so let's hit that uh what is server crash recovery for those who don't know uh i know this is a bit outside your wheelhouse but you're the one who's here today so what is server crash recovery and uh, uh why does it matter for 315 so in a nutshell if the server goes down previously when you log back on uh you would have to request your ship to come back uh, you know the ASAP terminals and essentially you'd be given a brand new ship it wouldn't be the ship that you were currently flying around with so anything that you had on there like cargo would be gone so with server crash recovery what happens is uh, essentially we, we run heartbeats to determine essentially the state of your ship and essentially if you if the server then goes down when you request your ship when you log back on it will actually be the ship that was recorded at the previous heartbeat so you would actually get the ship back and probably in 99% of the cases, it would be the ship that you were just flying. So it would have all your cargo in it. And fundamentally as well, it would also have all of your ship inventory. So if you've put all of armor and things into the ship inventory, you will retain that. So, you know, that's a really big one that if the server does go down and you log back on, you should be able to request your, your ship to come and it will be the ship that you essentially were flying previously. And when we talk about heartbeat, uh, j just to be super clear for people, it's obviously we, we can't be continuously writing every single player, every single millisecond of playing to the database that would that would just destroy the performance. Yeah. So so there, there will be an interval and then and I'm not going to give you a number right now because it's a thing that's in flux and, and will be continuously changing. But there will be an interval where it goes right and then you'll play for a little while. Right. And then you'll play for a while and right and play for a while and right. It's, it's like you, playing a single player game and keep going quick save and you play yeah, a exactly. bit more, it's, it's quick save. You go a bit more, quick save. You know, you're not going quick save, quick save, quick, quick save. <laughs> exactly. So, 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 so there, so there will be occasions where you die between the heartbeats. Like, you, like if you just got 70 K cargo between the heartbeats and then you die, that 70 K is going to be gone. It's like that. So yeah. it, it's, there will, it, it'll be important when it comes, when it comes online and well, it's, it's, already kind of working on PT right now uh, as it goes forward to recognize whether it was broken like oh I didn't get my stuff back no it could still be working you just made it might have lost your thing between the heartbeats and stuff like that so it'll it'll be an interesting also, new reporting channel cha challenge to be to be clear this is a placeholder solution until 
full persistence right. and server meshing comes online, which will remove this altogether. But at least this is a really good stopgap yes. while we have personal inventory going live so that you should really be able to play with confidence that you're not going to lose it based off a server crash. Right. Obviously, you might be unlucky, but at least that's, you know, for the majority of people, it should be a, a vast improvement. Yeah, and check out the uh, CitizenCon server meshing and persistence panel if you haven't to see where it's going and why uh, that heartbeat thing is only temporary and that the, the, the solution that, they're, that the team is actually working towards uh, will be much better than what this uh, temporary solution currently is. Um, just do some more general questions before we jump back into uh, healing stuff. Um, what kind of changes happen to planets? Uh, there have been some notable changes to the weather and the surface of multiple planets and moons, and uh, it would be rad to get more info, this person says. So essentially, there's been some tech changes in the background, uh, which caused some changes in the distribution in some of the biomes. So they've slightly changed. Uh, we are aware that some biomes are missing some of the elements, um, but the art team are working feverishly to try and uh, get some of those back. So that's pretty it, much that in a nutshell. Yeah, it, it, it just, if you've watched uh, some of the SELs where we talk about the procedural application of biomes and stuff, it's just as the tech grows, some of the configurations change and stuff like that. And it's, it's one of those things like you don't want to constantly go back while it's evolving and just keep changing the same yeah. number over and over again every time. So when the tech gets to another kind of uh, a threshold, Okay, so there goes, all right, now it's time to go back and, and make sure all those other things that kind of got lost along the way go back. So Yeah, I mean, essentially the way it technically works is obviously there's a height map, uh, and that height map it gives you, uh, a, a, you know, a solid ground, and then it has a distribution of, uh, you know, all the assets, so things like rocks, trees, and all that kind of thing. And then obviously um, we have buildings that are placed, and they're placed to fit onto the height map that's been generated so essentially any time where there's been some slight uh, changes in the technology such as when we did you know the different variants of the um of the terrain essentially it slightly changes that height map and then that just creates that cascading effect for all the others so it generally means the artists have to go back in and, and do a bit of jiggery pokery to get back to to the status quo uh, let's so jump back in. brilliant so far i've had mike run out of battery, then might fall off the headset, and somebody ring, rang me. I'm, I'm expecting somebody to burst through the door and fire alarm go off. At, 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 this point, <laughs> at this point, I've assumed that since this is your last SEO for a while that you're just trolling me the entire time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, let's jump back into healing and injury. Uh, what are your current takeaways from the initial P2 testing of healing and injury so far? I mean, we, we talked a little bit about the things that you had to change for the green zone and whatnot, but overall... Uh, so far, we've been on PTU for a week. What, what, what's been your what's, what's been your takeaway so far? I think my biggest takeaway is that I think people have been generally happy with the the features that have gone live. I think going back all from Evercarty to now, if I treat them individually, if I look at inventory, I think when inventory went live, um, it was fairly rough. Uh, we had some really big issues with the timings and the performance with that. I think I saw like 89 minutes to be able to change a helmet. And the, the scaling of the icons was not scaling correctly to the resolutions. So when we were making it of like 1080, it's fine. And then somebody was going to 4K and the icon was going like five times the size. You would get, no, it wasn't going small, it was going huge. So people were playing on high resolutions, which you'd expect people to have decent PCs who are playing at Uh, you know. They've got, they would like, I can only see one icon and then it's, I'm, I'm scrolling for hours and hours because they've got lots of oh, right, right. subscribe and it's like, what is this? And so I think we had some, some significant bugs that really had a large detriment on the experience. Uh, we also had quite a lot of quality of life that was kind of missing that we were still adding. Um, and based on the feedback from Epicast that we add, did add, I think the version that went in yesterday. You know, I think since Evercarta, we, you know, we've added sorting, we added filter categories, we should be adding instant filters so you don't have to apply them. I saw that yesterday. Um, you know, we've added sorting. Did I say sorting? Yeah, but we've added interaction points for like consumables, so like med pens and magazines and um, grenades. 
so that it moves the interaction points away from the character. Uh, and you also get uh, tooltip comparisons that you, so you that co correspond to the numbers, so you can quickly see like, okay, is that coming? Is that full? Is that half capacity in terms of magazines? So we've added a lot of um, improvements and quality of life between now and then. We've also been fixing a lot of the um, bugs that we've had. So the biggest priority ones where we've had like items being eaten and so on and so forth. We want to, they're like super critical, right? We don't want anybody losing anything. So I think inventory, I think it's, it's starting to get to where we want it to be um, for our tier zero at least. And I think that that's good to see. Uh, we still want to do lots of improvements and we'll be rolling straight onto them. So I'm happy in terms of the progress there. Uh, and I think I've seen some feedback threads now where people are still giving us feedback and it's great. And, you know, we're reading it all and, and, and digesting that and, you know, taking it down for improvements. Uh, I think for healing, healing as I think other than some people don't like beams and that's, you know, that's everybody's preference or so some people's preferences. Uh, I think that, that has gone down well. I think I've, we've seen lots of people being really engaged with the healing and medical gameplay. Uh, in terms of the different drugs, in terms of the masking of those drugs and injuries. Uh, obviously, medical beacons uh, are going live as well, and we've seen we've seen quite a lot of usage in that, so that's good to see. I think I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing both of these go into the live environment to see how they play out in a more natural environment, because obviously on the PTU, you, 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 people are jumping on there to try and test the features, which what what we need. It'd be interesting to see how they percolate to just general play over a period of time because it's it's kind of like when we released actor status t0 they take a long time for to really get a sense of how the player base is going to play with them at scale um but i mean overall i think th the feedback has been fairly positive across the two features and you know we're still we're not finished we've still got a long way to go but um yeah it's been good uh staying on the healing thing uh I don't get to play very much, but if you, it, it, when I do get to play, and for other players that are like me, we spend a lot of time at Kleischer. Um, uh, right now in Kleischer, a broken leg is pretty much a death sentence. Uh, what, what are we? Uh, what, what, what are, what are we? Do? I know prison healthcare isn't the best, but what are we doing <laughs> about that? Yes, I think for three fifteen, there's not much we will be doing uh, in terms of if you do get an injury in prison, which is unfortunate. Um, the one thing is that we will eventually add uh, medical facilities to the prison. Um, as as we do, if you can see now, for example, where we've um, linked the space station to the landing zone, because not all landing zones have a hospital, we've had to say, we've had to basically uh, create a few stopgap solutions for us to, to solve those problems. Um, but the, the goal is to add medical facilities in all the locations you would expect medical facilities to be added. And, you know, the prison should be one as well. So. Um, for now, it's an unfortunate, but it is something that we are we are discussing, and we, we do want to see if we can get something fixed. Okay. Uh, Smoop into inventory here again. Uh, in three fifteen, uh, all armor, guns, etc., go into ship storage, uh, but gu and gun racks are handled separately, and armor cupboards aren't used at all. Why is that? That's the next step of personal inventory. So if this is personal inventory T0, um, personal inventory T1 is the removal of um, local inventory so that it becomes physicalized inventory. And that's where lockers and gun racks and armor cupboards will be used properly. And then those armor cupboards will be used to save loadouts. So you'll be able to say, OK, this is my exploration suit. This is the ar ammo and armor, or so ammo and uh, backpack and guns and med pens that I want on this suit. And you'll be able to save that in a physical um, locker. And then you'll be able to interact with that locker and quickly put that on. So that's the next iteration of personal inventory. Okay. Uh, currently, if you wish to uh, loot armor or weapons, you essentially need to drop what you already have equipped, walk to your ship, strip and walk back naked to loot more or get your old gear uh will there be tweaks made to fit armor weaponry into backpacks so the goal of the industry right now is to make sure that it's it's a believable system in terms of the actual volume and items that you can fit within that space so for example if you've got 120 liter backpack um 
the description I always give is that you, and I think I've said this on, on one of our shows before, is like, I can't fit the snooker queue in there in terms of because it's so long. But if I put it through a wood chipper, I would be able to fit the volume in there. So we yeah. take into account the item dimensions and the volume. Um, the intention right now is that, you know, you can either body drag those enemies back to your ship or you can tractor beam. I'm not sure many people have been using the tractor beam, but you can actually tractor beam dead bodies. Oh. You can tractor beam a dead body back to your ship and then loot it that way. Um, we do want to offer other abilities down the line, other features that are around that, whether that's hover trolley or whatever that you can take out and then load up and then take in. It's it's the old Ultima Online pack horse. Um, but right. yeah, that's that's the uh, a further iteration on to the iteration that we have now. Yeah, I, I think I think what a lot of folks are probably wondering about is that it's like that they get. A set of armor legs, you know, sure, you're not going to be able to fit in, whatever. But a pair of pants can be folded, <laughs> conceivably. Uh, well, actually, and... that's actually a bug. Okay. So, for, so this this is something that's happened. I, I spoke to the guys. We've actually done a full pass now, and it should be going in today. I saw some, um, I saw an update on it. Essentially, anything that's like cloth or clothes, even though you see a large icon, it should have a very low. Um, Okay. micro SCU value. So an undersuit should easily fit in a backpack. I know it doesn't right now, but that, that was a bug. There's something going wrong with, the, with the, the size of this. So if you've got a backpack and you've got clothes or um, anything that you, you think should be able to fold, that should fit in. And we will be making that fit in for 315. It's when you've got like, hey, I, I want to be able to put the Caldera suit in my backpack. It's like, well, you would <laughs> never fit that. I mean, it's like a giant space suit. So. I'm imagining a folding laundry mini game right now. Absolutely. Uh, and then you've got the ironing T1. Uh, uh, Nubifier and everybody who's doing a recap thing uh, mention that without the context. Just like, yeah, there was some talk about a folding mini game, and just leave it at that to really just confuse the hell out of people who don't watch the full thing. Uh, starting locations. Uh, in 3.15, we now have all these starting locations. Uh, a lot of folks uh, have been requesting uh, that Grimhex be added as a starting location. What are our thoughts on that? So we talked about Grimhex, uh, and it's still a topic of discussion. Unfortunately, Grimhex doesn't have all of the uh, facilities that all the other starting locations have. So we're, obviously, when we take into account new players and new players coming to the verse, we have to make sure that you, know, you can get your ground vehicle out or you can get access to your ship and so on and so forth. So um, it's not to say that we won't add Grim Hex as a starting location in the future. Uh, for for 315, um, it, it won't be a starting location, but it is something that we are actively discussing. Um, you know, Todd, myself, Chris, Tony, that we about Grim Hex. So, you know, all you criminals out there, we, we do want to do you a solid, but it's uh, for now. Yeah, You'll have to be they're... UEE until you go criminal. Yeah, I think there there also needs to be consideration for the you know the beginning player experience for the for the first time per player of Star Citizen who doesn't know any better is Grimhex the place we want them to start that journey if if, if they've never experienced the PU before and stuff that's definitely got to be factored into the conversation. Yeah, I mean, there's always more considerations than people think about. You know, there's lots of different angles that you can take on it. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's it's definitely on the table. We're discussing it, but uh, I doubt we'll be adding it as a starting location for three fifteen. Um, uh, Nuba Fire, in addition to the ironing, closing, and folding mini game, uh, uh, iron on decals and stuff. To, you know, you know those little transfers, those little paper transfers. I'm thinking about that too. Um. With the changes coming to 315 when you die and the and the and you lose items that you had, uh, it's great for looting gameplay. But how do we prevent players from logging out and reconnecting to avoid losing items? It's a really good question. So, what we want to do is essentially what we did with the ships, where if somebody logs out, that your character, if somebody's around you and you know still fighting you or whatever, that your character persists. For a certain yeah. amount of time, a, a lot of MMOs do that. You know, it's, yeah. you know, it's either. Well, this is the so eternal MMO we, question right here. Yeah, so that's what we want to do. That you you persist for a certain amount of time, uh, and then you know, so you can't. You basically exploit the system to get away. 
Um, we're looking into that essentially to see what we can do in the meantime. Gotcha. So even if you load out, so, so yeah. So just like the ships, even if you even if you you ninja log Alt F4 or whatever, uh, your, yeah. your your player character is still there for a period of time. Yeah, because right now, if you if you just ninja log, then you can escape, and that's not the intention. And you know that's people exploiting the system. So we are looking into a way of, of doing that. Whether it makes 315 or not is will be d dependent on bugs and other factors. Um. Look in the chat here. Uh, Orison uh, security is currently unarmed, which means that they can't deal with players who have a crime stat. Uh, will Orison eventually get armed security? Yeah, yes, you can put it on silent, funny. and that doesn't happen. It is on silent, so I don't know why it's ringing. It's weird. I do that. But um. But don't take it. We'll wait. They will. Yeah, sure. Uh, they are. They can answer. They can answer some questions. Um, yes, we, they, I think they're fixing it. So they're looking into it now in terms of adding the loadout of weapons onto uh, onto the security guards. So Orison not having <laughs> weapons. Tyler's calling me now. <laughs> Who is? Tyler's calling me. Oh. So uh, so Orison <laughs> not having weapons wasn't uh, wasn't intentional. Uh, yes, for the folks who just uh, saw the pop up there, I'm going to Disney World for my uh, for my uh, uh, holiday vacation, and I have to book my Cinderella's Royal Table dinner today. So, important leaked information there. Um, here's one a little a little higher up. It's a little question good for you. Now that medical gameplay comes with 315 and the beginning of Death of a Spaceman. Do you think it was a good time to release while the game has so many bugs in it and chances to die due to these bugs? And how do you think this will affect the player's interest in the game? I think this, I mean, I touched on this in one of the previous questions in terms of, you know, these are a large systems and the complex systems and we want to get them out in terms of the player experience. Obviously, we want to try and fix as many bugs as possible and make it as polished experience as we can. Um, but obviously, when you're adding to a significant code base like Star Citizen, uh, there's always going to be new bugs or old bugs that reappear. Um, so we have do, we do have an initiative at CIG that's been in place for probably the last two years, or so, okay, since I can remember, where we're, we've been essentially making more time every quarter to fix bugs or technical debt so we can go in and basically fix as many bugs so that it, previously teams were essentially if you look at the graph it was just accumulating bugs every quarter and you know we were like that's not acceptable we need to start bringing them down and um, so now we, we're starting to see some teams um come down other teams are, are flatlining so they're trying to add more time so they can fix more bugs uh, but fundamentally it's always a balance it's a balance of when do we release new features versus fixing bugs you know, some people were like, well, why don't you just fix all the bugs and then add new features? Like I touched on before, any time that you add anything new, it generates new bugs. Even fixing bugs generates bugs. So it's just, there will always be um, fixing bugs until we get to content complete and then we can go into a more, uh, you know, release cycle. But for now, like you said, we are Star Citizen Alpha. And then, you know, we're still getting in some of the fundamental systems like inventory, like healing. And there'll be other big, big systems coming like server meshing and, you know, hangar management app and how you manage your ship load out. So there's lots still to come. Yeah. Uh, for those of you asking, yeah, no, no. Cinderella's a, a, a fancy table thing. It, it's dinner inside Cinderella's castle. And you have to book it like two months in advance, especially if you're trying to get it on New Year's Eve, which I'm trying to get, so that you can be in, atop inside Cinderella's castle having dinner with the fireworks out the window. I did it two years ago. It was beautiful. And I'm jealous. Uh, I am a pretty princess. Uh, are there uh, are there any super duper rare items in the loot boxes? I know there are I things in the loot think... boxes that you can't find in stores. There are things in loot boxes that shouldn't be in loot boxes, as well as things in loot boxes that you can't find in stores. Fair enough. Uh, loot boxes, uh, right now, I don't think there is anything super duper uh, rare. 
Um, but this is just the T0 of loot boxes. The loot boxes generally, sh I mean, I think people are having, you know, I think when we did Evo, the people were getting squadron items and flares and, you know. Um, the intention is that you should be able to find um, rarer things in the future. But in 3.15, this is about 3.15, um, I, don't I don't believe there's anything super duper rare. But you never know. So I want to re reiterate the answer there. Uh, some things that you're currently finding in loot boxes are not supposed to be there. Uh, uh, and some things, uh, but at the same time, there are supposed to be things that you can only find through exploration out in the verse. And that can be, that can be either different uh, color variations of existing items that only exist in loot boxes, you know, like different skins or whatever, or it can be, you know, full on variants of stuff or, you know, you know, we reserve the right to put, you know, whole things in there that, yeah, you just get that from the loot box or, you know, that, you know, and not from a store. It's we want to encourage players to get out there and in the, explore the universe and stuff like that. And part of how we do that is by putting things that can only be discovered out there in. So uh, right now, I can't tell you which is which, you know, when you look at one of those super weird things that you're finding, I can't tell you whether that's an intentional thing or whether that's a uh, whether that's a bug. Th essentially, story. they're going through the list now and making yeah. sure that, you know, before we go to live 315, that it's all what should be in there. Uh, the, we've got a lot of items, so they're just going through and making sure what ones should be in there are in there. And then we'll go from there. But th I don't think there's anything um, ultra rare right now. I, I think the two handed uh, tractor beam. The two handed tractor beam is not supposed to be live. So I don't even I, do, I don't even think it even works. But yeah, the two handed tractor beam is not supposed to be live. So that's one thing we will definitely be removing. <laughs> so somebody grabbed that. I'm like, I didn't know that was live. Um, back to inventory. We're we're all, we're almost done here. Uh, will we be able to create any sort of shareable cargo containers beyond backpacks? Uh, like, can we make ammo crates or medical supplies or boxes with food and drinks? Like, can we make our own loot crates and set it down kind of stuff? Uh, not for 315. Uh, you can't make crates. Um, but the intention is that you will eventually be able to buy um, boxes that you can then put stuff in and other people can share. And that will come with, um, the first time we would be able to do that would be the cargo refactor. Uh, that you'll be able to buy a, a, an empty box and use that in your cargo to store things. And then other people will be able to come and interact with that box. Um, but for 3.15, no. I can absolutely I can absolutely see some players purposely loading their ships up with like specific boxes of, of rare items and everything. And, and you know, flying through and like, you know, whoever's going to kill me, you know, it's like every you know, server try to kill me and you get, you get the prizes and stuff. It's the, it's the kind of, it's, it's, it's the next thing for like, uh, like Damar rally or the very, the various, uh, well, I still want uh, a drunk Damar rally. <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, uh, are there any short term plans to add an option to send or transfer ownership of items via the knickknack set? I would say in general, I don't know if specifically the next next app, but any plans I don't, to so it, 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 there's no basically the way that they want to have um, trading between between players is obviously going to be a different app. So there is there is plans to allow you to be in knickknacks and be like, I want to transfer this to someone else, and then it will take them to uh, the player trading app. Um, but I don't think there's anything short term to do that. And when I say short term, in terms of three fifteen. Uh, there's no plans in 3.15 to allow that, but it is um, a plan that will be done eventually. Okay. Um, can you be... <laughs> all right. Can you be very specific on how the future of storage interactions will take place, i.e. overhead compartments, cases, gun racks? We touched on this a little bit. Uh, before, but many citizens seem to think that the current magic toy box ship is an end game vision. Magic toy box ship is placeholder. <laughs> That's it. The, the, the magic bag of holding, local inventory, the version that you just magically open and see items in an ethereal box or an ethereal space is placeholder. So I'm just going to say that again. Magic toy box ship is placeholder. That will go. 
it will always be physicalized inventory. You will have your inner thought that manages your own items, looking in your backpack, and then you will deal with external inventory, interacting with a physical cupboard in the world, and you'll have physical inventory, which is interacting with things that you actually see. I can see that armor. It's in that armor cupboard. I open the, the door. I can pick up that armor and put it on myself. Any time with that is not the case, it's placeholder. And I think I've said that like a hundred yeah, times. I, I, I know. We, we, we said it in the whole you know, you know, uh, segment dedicated to it, but not, every, not everybody watches yeah. everything. Not everybody yep. takes in everything that they watch, and it's it's just it's one of those messages that's worth repeating over and over. Again. Yes, physical inventory is the goal. Okay. Uh, speaking of things we're working towards, is this the final UI for inventory and looting system? Ooh, final. That's a harsh word, uh, but no. This is the T zero. Uh, for inventory and looting system, we will keep uh, iterating and continuing on it. Um, obviously, if you've played Evercarty through to now, you've already seen a huge amount of change around that um, around that UI. So we're always going to be iterating and working on it. Um, but it's the one that is you know going live for three fifteen, and hopefully lots of people enjoy it. And then we'll take further feedback and then continue to iterate it when we do T one and T two and so on and so forth. And for folks in the chat that are like, I thought we weren't doing T0 anymore. That's a new initiative that's just starting this year, and you'll see the results of that later down the line. Well, that's, not a thing. that's, that's specifically to my pillar that's not doing yes. so. So this is we when we did the change for me going to Squadron to do polished features, this is this is we're like a ship tanker. That that discussion was me at the front shouting to the person at the back to change heading. So we've yes. only this is the last patch where we have the T zeros, and then from now on we should be moving to more polished features. Yep, and again that only replies to the uh, applies to the actor feature team stuff. You'll still the see core T zeros of pillar. Or the core gameplay pillar. Uh, you'll still see T zero stuff from the other teams and stuff like that. It's just a, it, it's just a change in direction for for one pillar at the moment, and like anything, it doesn't change on a dime. <laughs> it's like you just use the, the the big cargo ship. That's a good example. It's it'll it'll slowly change, you know, direction over time. So, uh, you may still see some T zero stuff before that's fully done. Um. All right, how much time do we got? Okay. Um, we got time for one more. I'm going to ask you the big one before we let you go here. Um, how far down the hardcore survival rabbit hole are you planning to go? Uh, you want us to play with others, uh, yet you continually that you yet you are continually adding systems that make me even more fearful to trust other players. How do you... Where, where are we going with this, and how do you balance that? Well, I think... It's, it's a, it's a rock and a hard place in some respects. I think, I think it's the strength in numbers, but then obviously that's the premise is that you should play together with other people and then, you know, helps you out. But I mean, to answer the question specifically, uh, you know, we've got actor status in terms of eating and drinking. We have, we want the game to be around resources that players can um, collect. Obviously homesteads eventually, and those homesteads will be areas that you can store your own things and obviously we'll have raiding and pirates and and all of that kind of thing so i suppose we've got chris has a vision in his mind from what what he wants star system to be um obviously there are elements of games like you know valheim and tarkov and rust that, that, that tie into that but star citizen is its own game and it will set its own boundaries with how it how it um how it executes those mechanics so a good example is eating and drinking you know, really, in terms of comparisons to other survival games, we're very, very light on eating and drinking. You know, we I think it's like 10, 12 hours if you just stood still in the PU before you have to uh, eat and uh, eat anything. Right. So, you know, if you play Ark, you have to eat every five minutes, whereas, you know, it, it, it's it's dependent. So I think we want to have those mechanics that we're moving towards which we, has always been the intention since way before I even joined Cloud Imperium. Mm. I know only now that we're delivering on them. So I think it's a hard answer to, to talk about because fundamentally we're still getting everything in there 
and the balance will dictate really the, dictate that answer because how hardcore do we want to be like it could take me five minutes to just change all the data to say you have to drink every half an hour but that's not the game that we want we want a, a, a game that is more realistic is probably the wrong word but you know a game that's more that, that is more cohesive to the star system experience that you're this space explorer out in the verse and you know you've got ships that have all these different functions and you have beds in there so eventually we want we will want players to have tiredness or we have we have um showers so you know do we want hygiene well yeah that's part of active status i think it's on the roadmap there, there, there's a lots of things uh, that we will add and we'll go from there uh, there's, there's a couple of things to dissect there. We, uh, we, Chris has always said, you take it to the point of realism, and then you bring it back to the point of fun. You know, so so it's it's one of those, uh, there, there there will there will be people that chastise as a that's not real. It's like it's like it's like what eating only eating every ten hours or twelve hours or whatever. It is always about that balance. It is always take it to the point of realism, then bring it back to the point of fun, and well, that is a thing. So go on. No, I, and that's a thing that we discover together. That is why we have a live environment in our alpha. It's we don't just set out with a number of, of anything like, oh, th this is this is the picture we want to build. And we are truly developing this together. And I know sometimes that that sounds like buzzword or whatever. But I think but I would hope that anybody who's been watching me for the last you know six, seven years I've been here uh Knows I'm going to be frank and honest with people to the point of that it sometimes makes my bosses upset. Uh, that we are making this together, and we and your feedback gets incorporated into this stuff, and our ideas for the game evolve along with the experience and the feedback that you give us and stuff like this. So it's it can be a very difficult question to answer today because it's the answer will be discovered together through our continual development and our continual testing. Is what I was getting at. And there's there's also when you take into account, you know, are we are we just a pure simulation? We're not. No. You know, we want to, we're 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 simulating a universe and all of those things inside of that universe. But there are things in there that are, you know, what what most people would expect to happen. So a good example is, um, what what would you expect to happen if you walk up a mountain? You expect it to get colder. So, you know, and the closer you get to outer space, people think, well, it should get colder. But if you actually look at the real science behind what happens to the temperature between leaving the ground and entering space, it basically goes, it gets colder, then it gets hotter because like the atmosphere thins and it starts to get more and then it gets colder again and then it gets hotter again. And it's like this crazy graph that's like hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And if we had implemented that, as a absolute mirror, a pure simulation of temperature, which to be fair would have been incredibly complex. Oh, I just lost Rich. Oh, you're back. Oh, we're back. So yep. most people would have come back and said it was a bug, that that, that was happening, and we're like, and we would have had to explain, like, no, 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 that's real life. So we yeah. have to take into those accounts that you know, we want to simulate real life. But, you know, how it's what people expect. It's people's expectations of what real life is. And I think that's what, that's a balance that we want to have. And we want to go for as a push for as much realism as we can, um, you know, where it makes sense. And by the way, 10 to 12 hours was 10 to 12 hours of our world time. That's not 10 to 12 hours of in-game time, which is much longer in-game time. All right. Well, that about that about does it. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Rich, uh, for those watching. Uh, that that amazing face he was making when he froze. Uh, you have permission to cut that out and use that as a Twitch emote. Um, this is the formal permission for that. Uh, I asked Rich. He's he's cool with it. Um, additionally, for folks asking, uh, always lots of when questions. When is PTU going to wave two? When is PTU going to all players? When is 315 going to live? Uh, as the only answer I ever have for when questions, folks, is when we think it's ready. 
uh, that that's part of our process. That's part of why we went crowdfunded and stuff like that. So we wouldn't be beholden to these arbitrary dates and be forced to push something out before we think it's ready. So just uh, continue to monitor the robertspaceindustries.com uh, website for information on when those changes happen. Uh, and as far as anything else, like uh, other questions, when is when is Linux coming? When is Polaris coming and stuff? That's why we have the the, the public roadmap. So. All when questions go to the website in one way, shape, or form. Rich, thank you for being here. I don't know when the next time we're going to have you on because this this completes the, the, you're you're now subsuming yourself into Squadron Forty Two. But I'll miss you. No, no doubt there'll be some way of getting me back on. I'll, 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 I'll figure out. I'll, 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 I'll contrive some reason to bring you back on. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, uh, ISC returns on November 4th. Let me check my calendar. Yeah, uh, November 4th. Um, so, keep, uh, so keep an eye on that. We'll be back with another Star Citizen Live uh, next Friday. Uh, until then, that was, that was Rich. I'm Jared. Uh, have fun. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.